Where'd you get it? What difference does that make? I see three choices. Either you're an Imperial spy, you're fronting for the person I really want to speak to, or you're the thing itself. I see one choice. Either you got my money or you don't. So which is it? I know Big Sass are gay. I know you bribe quartermasters to leave valuables on the ships before they come in for scrap, but this isn't that. This isn't something that let pass. No. I went in and got this myself. How? How's that possible? It was, it was sealed on the Imperial Naval Base in Stiergard. Look, you got the money, I got the box. What else is there to talk about? I'll give you another thousand credits to tell me how you got it. <laughs> another thousand. Done. Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new to the channel, my name is Charles and I review movies and series. Today I'll be reviewing Andor episode 1, 2, 3 and it's going to be a non-spoiler review. Uh, Andor is a series that is set in the Star Wars universe. This, it takes place approximately five years before the events of Rogue One and we are following Cassian Andor, you know, how he became who he was when we saw him in Rogue One. It was really nice being back to the Star Wars universe. The last time we were there was during Obi-Wan. So it was really, I think I've missed that word. So it was really nice being back there. And Star Wars has this ability to make robots very likable. We've seen it with BB-8, we've seen it with C-3PO, and we've seen it with R2-D2, we've seen it with Chopper. I don't know how they do it, but they give their robots personalities. And we also saw it here with B-2 Emo. And um, after watching episode 1, 2, 3, I just felt like they could have just made it one episode, like one whole episode. Because it felt like episode 1, at the end of episode 1, I felt something was missing. Same with episode 2, but by the time I got to episode 3, I was like, okay, this is what they're doing. And it was very smart of them to release the three episodes the same time because if they just release one episode oh i don't think anybody is going to tune to the next episode but episode one two and three should have just been one long ass episode but we get what we get and this andor is pretty mature for disney star wars it's very mature so there are lots of things that you you know to adults, not so adults that it's encroaching on the realm of HBO, but still adults. The costume design, production, um, VFX, CGI, acting, music, the crew did an amazing job. All the behind the scenes, the behind the scenes, the director, the writing, it was just so good. It, if, this is the first time I'm watching a Star Wars show or even movie and I felt immersed in the in the world it's always Star Wars for me has always felt like something you know literally in a galaxy far far away something in the distant future but this this three the first three episodes actually felt real They're not you know if flying cars are real but it felt like some place I could be in some place that could actually exist I don't, I really don't have to, how to explain it, but that's how it felt to me and I really enjoyed that. The crew, they did an amazing job, the technical crew especially, they did an amazing job. Um, and it's also so nice seeing Cassian slowly becoming a spy, just really nice seeing him slowly becoming a spy. And obviously, Stellan Skargard can do no wrong, can do no wrong, it was wonderful seeing him. For a Star Wars show, and for a show set in a galaxy far, far away, it felt more like Doom than Star Wars because almost all the major characters or the, or the major players from episode 1, 2, and 3 are humans. There were no aliens. That's just me, and this is just my preference. I prefer to 
I prefer when there is a mix of humans and aliens. That, I think that gives it that Star Wars feel for me, and I didn't get that with this. And I'm used to Jedi jargon, like the Force, the Sith, the Rule of One, Darth Bane, Darth Vader. Use the Force, your lightsaber. I'm used to Jedi jargon. I'm not used to Imperial jargon. And this first three episodes, we are just filled with Imperial jargon. I couldn't understand most of the things we are saying. And I've, you know, since watching Star Wars, I've always been a rebel person. The the Empire or even the Republic. I've, I've never really been my people, but this was just filled with Imperial jargon. And I, I didn't really, I, I didn't care for it at all. And also, the episode was slow the three episodes they were slow there was not enough action scenes i feel that if i, I get what they're trying to do you know like something thriller kind of but i think you need to insert some action scenes to keep people engaged but not like all the time but some scenes because i slept after it was one and two i slept off I totally slept off. When I now woke up and continued watching it, I started feeling sleepy again until towards the very ending when something actually happened. The storyline moved forward. And I enjoyed it. The writing was very good, but it was really slow. Like very slow and very boring. And sincerely speaking, I don't really care about his backstory. I th- I feel personally that Cassian's backstory took a lot of space, a lot of space, a lot of undeserved space. I really don't care about his backstory, like at all. Like his backstory was, was even way more boring than the main storyline. And I, I don't, maybe that that building up to something. But for now, I don't really care about it. And I feel it's taking up time, it's taking up space for for some uh, from something better. And just like I said before, episode one, two, episode one and two just felt so unfulfilling which was smart of them to put episode 1, 2 and 3 together but they could have just prevented all of this and made episode 1, 2 and 3 just one episode a very long episode but I mean, if, I was re- if I reviewed episode 1 separately I would have a lot of bad things to say I reviewed episode 2 separately, the same thing but then 3 of them together was actually good It's slow. It started off. It started off really slow, and dare I say, boring. <laughs> but it's not bad. It's not. It's not. It's not a bad thing. But the pacing is really slow, and there are not, not enough action scenes. And let's just, let's just be sincere to ourselves. A lot of people, a lot of normies, watch Star Wars for space wizards, basically. So a lot of people want to see the space wizards. That's why we need to see our first choking and our first pushing and lightsabers flinging around. We need to see it. That's that's why a lot of people watch Star Wars. So and there was none of that here. So that that might have contributed to the boringness of it all. And there are no references or none I could see from two rather sorry. Star Wars at large, but it was still enjoyable. It was you still enjoy it. You just be bored for you'll be bored from you'll be bored the whole of episode two. But if you can power through to the end of episode three, you are going to enjoy it more. Not that he did anything special or good or bad or you know something new in this episode is just that the other characters we've not really gotten to know them we don't know their personality we don't yeah we've not really gotten to know them all the other characters even Cassian was not really we do really get to know him in these three episodes it's just because of what we knew before in Rogue One that's what we are going by and that's why he's the character of this episode It should have been higher, but episode two was so boring, so boring 
that is just the, the whole this is down but if you compile three you're going to enjoy it 6.5 please subscribe turn on the notification bell like comment let me know your thoughts on the video and the episodes i hope you have a wonderful day and i'll see you guys on the next one